welcome back to the Gone for 10 show. Yes, it is the second episode of the week. We did have to cut the preview and the review in half, but sometimes life comes first, sometimes things come up and we need to take care of them. But again, it's your host, Tony. I'm joined by Baxter. Baxter, first of all, how are you doing? And second of all, I believe you've been doing a bit of research and you wanted to correct yourself on something from last podcast. Yeah, <clears throat> as you said, life gets in the way and being a parent takes over, um, unfortunately. But, yes, I've had doing some research. Uh, I, I, I believe that I got the um, the pronunciations uh, wrong of the uh, Samoan and Tonga war dancers, and they're not the hakas. Uh, that is a Maori slash New Zealand uh, name, but it's like the the Siva Tau and the Shiva Tau, um, or S S uh, Sippy Tau and Shiva Tau, war dancers um i think the shiva is the um the samoan and the sippy is the tongan um but both great dancers um to see him perform before the quarterfinal game yeah but that was my research for the week uh thank you for the listener who commented on our last uh, pod it's good to learn that's what we're here for 100%. We are here to learn, but we are also here for one more Finn Baxter. We are here to talk about the semi finals. Our prediction on one side, you have Australia taking on New Zealand. On the other side, you have England taking on Samoa. So let's kick it off. We'll pop the mm. first one on the screen because my first mm. question isn't going to be about obviously the Australian lineup. At the time of recording, we do have the 19 men that will be put forward by Mal Meninga. Obviously, it's Wednesday night. We still don't have every single team, so we're going to talk a bit more in depth about that. But let's talk about this discussion on the screen. James Tedesco, Joey Manu, they both want that fullback position, arguably, at the Roosters. I'm not going to say you have some hate for James Tedesco, but you definitely have some bias against him. But talk to me. Could this game decide who the better fullback is? I think no. I think Tedesco is still clear, given he has done it for multiple years. But... This is a chance for Joey Manu to kind of go, hey, pay attention to me. I'm the next Roosters fullback. I think he is. <clears throat> I think he's spot on there. Um, I think this is a game where Trent Robertson and Nick Pelias will sit back and go, well, he's our next fullback um, for when the day is comes that they go, all right, they tap Teddy on the shoulder and say, all right, your time is done here. Um, but... <clears throat> to, as you said, I don't believe Teddy, unbiased aside, I don't believe Teddy will be be second string to Manu coming up for the 2023 season. Um, it'll be good. It'll be good. It'll be a good game to watch. Uh, fullback v fullback. So it'll be a good game coming up. 100%. Now, like we said, at the stage of recording Wednesday night, we do have the 19 men that will play for Australia. So I am going to bring them up on the screen. Obviously, it's a very, very interesting, I guess you could say, lineup. And not just because of the numbers, because of some of the players that are all in there. But we have Josh Odekar, RCG, Pat Carrigan, Daly Cherry Evans, Nathan Cleary, Ruben Cotter, Angus Crichton, Tino Famasuli, Harry Grant, Valentine Holmes, Ben Hunt, Liam Martin, Latrell Mitchell, Cameron Munster, Cameron Murray, Captain Tedesco, Jake Chaboyevic, Jack Wyden, Isaiah Yo, and obviously the coach, Mal Meninga. Backs up. Obviously, we've spoken about it off air, but talk to me. What stands out here? What questions do you have about this lineup, and how do you think we're actually going to line up? Come obviously Saturday morning Australian time. Yeah, I think it was me who showed you this and was like, we got Cleary and Cherry both named, as well as Hunt and my, uh, Harry Grant as also. So are we going with a two hooker, two half? combo on the bench um i don't believe so i know we're just talking off air quickly about it and i did bring up one name that i thought might drop out but it all depends on um uh, your man teddy uh he did go down a little bit injured in the quarter final so it all depends on him because if he's ruled out i think there'll be a spine shuffle um you might see Cher cherry go to six and monster to one uh, but it, it all comes down on fitness, and I think maybe Cherry at this stage will be the 19th man. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely going to be an interesting matchup. We saw how Ben Hunt and Harry Grant worked on the origin stage. 
it arguably won Queensland the Shield as much as I hate to admit it. They're both great players and they give that depth off the bench when one of them comes on and one comes off. But I guess, like you said, it's going to go down to is Tedesco fit? Is the bug that's been going around the team, who is it affecting? Are they okay? Are they 100%? We don't know. What this does, and it wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past it, is Mal Maniga goes, let's keep New Zealand guessing. Let's not tell them who our half partners are going to be. Let's not no. tell them if our spine's injured. Let's not tell them who's going to play in what position. We already confused the shit out of every single person watching this podcast with our numbers. Let's confuse it with our player selections at the exact same time. So, mm. like I said, 18th man. You know what? It could be a Cherry Evans because if we were to lose Tedesco for whatever reason and that 18th man gets activated, 19th man, whoever you need, you've got Latrell that can play fullback. You've got Munster that can play fullback. You've got those players that can play in the halves. But enough on Australia. You did have Joey Manu to win the top try scorer. At this stage, he probably hasn't scored as many tries as we both thought he would have, but he's definitely scored important tries given he did score to try to equalise last game. Talk to me about the New Zealand side as a whole, I guess. Joey Manu, he could be the main man. They do have Hargraves. They do have Nelson. They've got those big forwards. How do you see this one playing out? Yeah, uh, New Zealand as a whole, um, credits to them because you looked at their squad, there wasn't really a much depth past the sort of starting 17s, so to speak. Like if, um, you know, if I think it was Dylan Brown goes down, um, up steps Kieran Fawn, um, but if uh, Jerome Hughes went down, I don't know the name or don't really know the player to step up and be the number seven for uh, New Zealand in respect to the position. Um, again, fullback, I think they've got a bit of quality depth there, but around the park, I don't see I don't know a lot of names to sort of give my professional opinion on the whole squad but they've been really 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 good um they got tested last game and hopefully they put up another big fight for us and make another game of the tournament um so to speak uh for viewing um and whatnot so what about well, you man what do you think about new I, zealand i will jump i will jump in i, I will jump in back and i will get your opinion again because what i'm going to do is Again, we don't know what the lineup's going to be for New Zealand as of yet, but what I can pop up is the team they played against Fiji. So, obviously, you had Joey Manu at fullback. You had Ronaldo Militari. You had Peter Hiku. You had Charles Nipokostak. You had Jordan Rapani. You had Dylan Brown. You had Jerome Hughes. You had Jesse Bromwich. You had Brendan Smith. You had Fisher Harris. You had Kenneth Bromwich. You had Nelson. You had Joseph Tarpany. You had Papali. You've got Kieran Foran. You've got Nakora. You've got Luai. And then you've got a Hargraves coming back, obviously, from suspension who adds that mongrel into mm. that pack. So I guess 1-18, to 18, like you said, very dangerous, very scary if you are an Australian. But now that you've seen those names, where do you think this battle's won? Is it one in the back lines? Is it one in the spine? Is it one in the forwards? Is it one in the halves? Like, who wins this game? Who controls this game? And then give me your prediction, 1-12, to 13-plus, either way. It's, uh, it's a battle of the uh, forward pack because <clears throat> I could see both um, both teams uh, u- utilising the, uh, the the speed and agility and the quickness of the dummy half runs to get that ball out. Um, I know RCG likes to hit the deck on his, hand, uh, on his knees and elbows and he try- gets up and tries to play a quick play of the ball, which, you know, rolls onto the next tackle, which carries momentum and vice versa for the um, New Zealand side. Uh, I know like Hectic Cheese, he, uh, he loves a quick pay ball and he loves to get that momentum going for New Zealand. And, you know, then comes in Joey Manu, then then comes in all the other rest of the players to pile on momentum that way. So I'm going to say it's, it, it's in the pack. Um, whichever team decides to get the advantage line over, over, over the other one, um, will win the game. I think the only thing that we have over New Zealand is we have this young hooker, Harry Grant, sitting on the bench. So Ben Hunt, he can absorb all the um, first 20, 25 minutes worth of uh, 
what, physicality in the game. And on comes a young, yeah, Harry Grant and um, his agility to get out and uh, uh, smell a, a lazy defender is second to none. So uh, I think that's where we'll win the battle. And I'm going Australia, um, non biased aside, Australia. And I'm going to go actually 1 to 10. Um, I'm going to think it's going to be a closer game than many predict. Yeah, 100%. Obviously, we are going in heavy, heavy favourites. I think I was looking at the betting before, and it's like $1.25 to $4. So we are going in heavy favourites, the Australians. I do think we get the job done. I'm going to go 13+, plus purely because I think we saw a lot of, I guess, holes in that New Zealand side. If you can keep certain players out, if Australia's smart, they're going after the likes of Nelson. They're going after the likes of Hargraves. They're trying to get them sent to the bin. They're trying to get them sent off. The penalties will keep rolling if they do get on the bad side of the ref. So you're going 1-10 to 10 Australia. I'm going 13+. plus. Let's jump into the second game of the semis. It's obviously England taking on Samoa. Baxter, big, big game. I'm going to pop it up on the screen quickly. The last time these sides faced, it was 6-6 to six in round one of this tournament. An absolute masterclass. 21st minute, 24th, 29th. It goes on. Dominic mm-hmm. Young torched him. Thomas Burgess torched him. Markinson torched him. But this is a different Tonga side. So mm, how do you very- see this one going? Do you think it's going to be... I'm not going to say competitive. I don't want to bring that word into it because I think it will be a good game. They will fight. But do you see another blowout or do you see this being more of a 1-12? to 12? What are your predictions on this one? Yeah, you're just talking about um, betting-wise. Um, we'll just touch on Australia uh, at the moment as it stands at here at about uh, five minutes to nine o'clock on Wednesday. Australia are paying one twenty to Kiwis four dollars fifty. Um, England are paying a dollar thirty five to Samoa three dollars twenty five. So they are juicy, juicy bets if you're looking to get an upset. But <clears throat> I am um, yes, gamble responsibly. Please do. Uh, we don't want anybody going out of uh, out of control with their gambling addiction if they've got one. Um, I am going for a shock here. I think this game is going to be competitive and, you know, Samoa's not going to remember the first game of the, the, the tournament. It's in the back of their mind. It's on the plane, back with Tonga, back with Fiji. It's gone. That game's gone to them. They're going to be looking ahead because since then they've just been up and up and they've been really, really uh, good to watch. Um, even the first game, I think it was more of a just sort of getting the uh, cohesion and just the playing, uh, the gel sort of linking up together. So I am a, I'm going to go really, really out there. I'm going to go say it's one to six and I'm going Samoa. I think Samoa do, them, do England, they surprise. They were my dark horse of the competition. I think they will um, <clears throat> they'll surprise England on home soil and it'll be Australia Samoa final. I mean it's definitely out there, it's definitely an out there, but it, it's something that could happen, who knows? But I guess I'm I'm gonna bring us a bit back down to earth, like you said, <laughs> in that round one. It was it was a young Samoan side who wasn't really exposed to these big games in the World Cup. So they did come in with a young spine, a young half who, let's be honest, he's a great player, but he is that shadow to Nathan Cleary. Um, To'o, um, he's a prick if he's not on your team, but when he's on your team, he's an absolute legend. I would have loved to see him line up for Australia at this World Cup. But wow. I... I am going to side with the home team. I think England do get the job done. I think it's just... Mate, too much momentum. The Samoans' bodies, they're going to be battered. They're going to be bruised. England kind of cruised into this semi final. They've rested players. They haven't played big minutes. So for me, England, I'm going to go 1 to 12. I think Samoa will put a bit more respect after that thrashing. But I guess my final question to you on this game is you're walking out, say you're the coach of Samoa. The week leading up to it, you've started, you've played on the Sunday, you're leading up to it. What do you say to him? Do you, do you mention at the feet? Do you mention, hey, these guys destroyed you. It's time to get revenge. Do you try and feel that fire underneath them, or is it just a, boys, we're playing England this week. Let's scout. Let's see how we go. Because obviously, the game film's going to be 
watching them score try after try after try against you. So how much do you talk about, obviously, that massive defeat? Um, you got to talk. You, you have to. You, sorry, you do have to address the elephant in the room. Um, how much you want to address it is up to the um, the playing staff and the coaching um, squad. Um, so, I, I as I said, I address it a little bit and be like, "Look, first game of the tournament, we got torched." Don't worry about it. You keep the you keep the, this week leading up to the game on Sunday at 1:30 a.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Um, you keep the you keep the camp happy. You keep them jumping, bubbling around. You treat it really the other way. I can you treat it like an NRL Grand Final week. Um, the team you get that the box out and you start rocking, isn't that exactly, how they do it? Those boys? Exactly, exactly. You just be yourselves. You just be. Who you are, you don't try and be anybody else. You know, you, you know. Um, you know, the boys want to go kick a footy around and just play a little bit. Of touch, go. Ha, ha, keep the keep the, the camp happy. Keep them up, bubbly. Because come that game, I reckon if Samoa come out all hell's bells and um, they're all up on the toes and happy and whatnot, I reckon they'll get the jump over England because England will be. You know, uh, I believe England will have this sort of structure and be like, come on, boys, this is just this is routine. We beat them once. We can beat them again. And they'll come out with, like, sort of a 2001 Pamela or so where they're drilled down and their week's been boring. Um, and Samoa will get them, get them over the over the line. Um, so that's where I think you have to... So it's a sort of a balanced juggling act here. Um, again, address it. How much you address it is the key to your success well it's definitely going to be interesting um i think it's going to be more spins and turns and straightforward given it is a semi-final anything can happen someone could get sick someone could get injured it changes the game completely but backstar you have samoa versus australia you obviously have said in previous podcasts you have australia winning that mm -hmm. i have australia playing england i have australia actually winning that one 13 plus but Obviously, we will go into more depth. Obviously, once once we do have those two teams that are in the final, we'll review it on the next episode. We'll preview it. But I guess before we do wrap up, Liam, Liam G, he's changing the name on YouTube. I'm not exactly sure what it is right now. But, mate, if you're listening, get in touch. We would love to have you on the podcast. Let us know when you're free. Let us know who you're going for in these games because we'd love to have you on as a third person and kind of do a five in the bin, ask you a few questions, have a few chats, and then move on. But... Baxter, I can see you looking up Liam's name. Yeah, because you changed it. It's Les in, in pos, Posta. L E Z I S A N Imposter. Formerly was Liam G. Well played, mate. You had to be right eventually. Mate, I've been back in Samoa the whole comp as this dark horse, and here they are in the final four. So come on, mate. He's talking about Tonga saying you're right, they're finally gonna lose a game. And like I replied. A broken clock right twice a day. So it is what it is. You did get that one right. But Baxter, mate, thank you for joining me. We'll be back to talk all semi-final action. Who knows if we've got a bit of free time over the weekend, we might pop off after a game, give a quick five, 10 minute preview, review, whatever we want to do once we have those lineups. But hmm. Baxter, as always, mate, thank you for joining me. And guys, we'll be back very soon to talk about the semi-finals. Yeah, peace.